Hey everybody, it's Peshu. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to look at yet another application of price elasticity of demand. And this time we'll look at the significance of PED for the government in relation to indirect taxation. So let's get started. The first thing that we should do is quickly do a recap and look at the formula of price elasticity of demand. If you remember, we define the price elasticity of demand as the percentage change of the quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the price. Now, if the price elasticity of demand is inelastic, so if the value of this is less than one, this would mean that price, uh, one second. Okay. This will mean that the percentage change of quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the price is less than one. Now we can conclude from, if this is true, that the percentage change in quantity demanded will be less than the percentage change in the price if PED is inelastic. And this is very important because governments use this whenever they apply indirect taxation. The idea is that even if you cause an increase in the price level through adding taxes, the impact on the prices will be less than the impact on the quantity demanded and the consumers will continue to buy this product. Okay, we just saw that whenever the price elasticity of demand is inelastic, the percentage change in the quantity demanded will be smaller than the percentage change in the price. Uh, we can use a graphical analysis and see how that will affect the tax revenue. So to do this, I'll have two simultaneous diagrams. And the first one would be this case when the price elasticity of demand is less than one. So it's, this is the inelastic case. And this one would be the situation when the price elasticity of demand is greater than one. So we have elastic demand over here. Do not forget the measurement units. So price and quantity. And uh, let's add the demand curves. Change the color. So we have an inelastic demand here. And then we have an elastic demand here. And um, let's add the supplies. This is a zero. And I'll try to make a similar supply curve over here. So this is S zero. Now, generally an indirect tax can, is applied uh, on the supply curve. This is the case whenever the tax is being collected by, from, the, uh, from the sellers. And it's the more practical approach. We could put a tax on the customers and then collect the tax from the customers. In theory, it should have exactly the same effect, though in practice, it would be very difficult to track down every customer. It's a lot easier to simply uh, collect uh, the tax from the suppliers, which is why taxes have a negative effect on the supply. They actually decrease the supply. Graphically, this can be illustrated as a shift of the supply curve to the left. I will use a unit tax in this case, just to make the analysis somewhat easier. But if you apply an ad volarum or a percentage tax, uh, it's not going to change the final outcome. Simply instead of shifting the supply, you would have to rotate it. So let's say that this is my supply S one. And the difference between these two is my tax level. So this is the tax T. I will apply an equivalent tax over here, more or less, this looks like it, T, and then this would be the new supply. Um, so S1 in both cases is the supply after tax, we can say after tax and after tax. All right, now let's see how the consumers will be affected from this and what happens to the overall market. Before the tax, our equilibrium was the point where the S0 would intersect with D. And so this is Q0 and this would be the original P0 in both markets. 
Q0 and P0. Now, after the tax, the supply decreases, it's shifted to the left, like this way. Uh, and we go to new equilibrium points, E1, E1, and E1. So they will generate Q1 and P1s in both markets. Okay, let's compare, first of all, the changes in the equilibrium. Notice that when the price elasticity demand is elastic, we have a relatively large decline in the quantity demanded and a relatively small increase in the price. This happens because the consumers are able to find alternatives to this product. Remember, goods with elastic price elasticity of demand have many substitutes, and if the government is taxing one of these goods, the consumers will simply stop buying this product and move to another one, which is not being taxed, which explains the large decline, the relatively large decline in quantity demanded and a relatively small increase in the price level. Now, let's have a look at uh, the other case when the price elasticity of demand is uh, inelastic. We have a relatively small decline in consumption and a relatively large increase in the price level. This happens because the consumers will continue to buy this product. This is one of the features of low price elasticity of demand. The, the consumers may be having a high need for this product or they may not be available substitutes or simply the consumers may need this product on the spot so they have little time in deciding whether to buy it or not. Or uh, this product may be simply a relatively low cost product in comparison as to the consumer income, so the people would still continue to buy it. As a result, the tax transforms into a bigger increase in the price, yet people continue to buy it. We have a relatively small decline in the, um, uh, in, in the uh, quantity demanded. So now if we look at uh, the tax revenues that the government earn, the tax revenue would be equivalent to this rectangle over here. Uh, let's call this um, P2. And uh, I'm going to call this point, uh, let's call it point T. So P1, E1, T, P2. This rectangle is the tax revenue. for the government. And the corresponding tax revenue on this diagram would be P1, E1, we said this point is point T, and this would be P2. Uh, so in both cases, this is the tax revenue. What usually happens is uh, the government would be more efficient at collecting taxes whenever they tax goods with inelastic demand, simply because the consumers would still buy this product and as a result the tax revenue would be greater in this case than in this case. Now because we don't have actual numbers these two revenue boxes look somewhat identical but the, the decline in quantity demanded that is being observed over here would make this tax collection less efficient. Over here, people who simply continue to buy this product, they would be upset about the higher price, but they continue to, to purchase it. As a matter of fact, we can see that in this case, with inelastic demand, this would be the consumer tax incidence or the share of the tax that is being purchased or paid by the consumers. So this is the consumer incidence, the, the proportion of the tax paid by the consumers. And this is the producer incidence. We see that the producers pay a relatively smaller share 
than the consumers, which is why the tax is efficient, because the consumers continue buying this product despite the fact that the price has increased. If we look at what's happening on the other, uh, on the other case, um, the producer burden or incidence from the tax will be this much. So this is the producer incidence and the consumers pay a relatively small part of this tax. This green area represents their tax burden. So consumer incidence. So once again, this proves that the government would be more efficient at collecting taxes for collecting taxes from goods with inelastic price elasticity of demand. And if you try to think what are the typical goods that governments like to tax, governments put taxes on alcohol, they put taxes on cigarettes, they put taxes on uh, petrol. Why? Because those goods have very inelastic price elasticity of demand. Thus, they're very effective for generating tax revenues, which the government can use in order to uh, fund its activities. Also, uh, some of these products are obviously very bad for the consumer's health. Uh, tobacco and alcohol is are clear examples of this. And thus, by putting taxes on them, the government would try to discourage consumers from buying these products. However, because the price elasticity of demand is inelastic, these goods uh, will be, will be, uh, However, because the price elasticity of demand is inelastic, the consumers will continue to buy these products. This is simply due to their addictive nature, which creates high necessity, thus low price elasticity of demand. So many people argue that if the government says that they put a tax in order to discourage consumers from buying uh, demerit goods, uh, goods like tobacco and uh, alcohol, which are bad for society, um, well, putting taxes is not the most effective way at discouraging people from doing that. Uh, but putting taxes on these goods, on the other hand, generate very high uh, tax revenue, which is used by the government. Um, on the other hand, if we take uh, junk food, for example, junk food is not taxed, even though it's very uh, health damaging and dangerous for the consumers. Why doesn't the government bother to tax junk food? Well, junk food has many alternatives, thus it will have elastic price elasticity of demand. It also is not very uh, addictive in nature and thus people do not have high necessity to consume it, which in a sense causes its high elasticity of demand. And there are many uh, substitutes for it. So the next time when you're wondering why the government puts a tax on tobacco and, uh, and on alcohol, but not on junk food, well, price elasticity of demand is the answer to that question. Simply one of them will generate high tax revenue and the other one will not. Okay, guys, this is it for this lesson. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like button. Uh, if you want to leave any comments, you can do so in the comment section. I'll try to answer them. And uh, if you want, subscribe to the channel. Take care.